Today on the Family Law Vlog, I'm joined by my colleague Alison Bull, who's a mediator and also undertakes child inclusive mediation for families. So we're going to talk a little bit about what child inclusive mediation is and how it might be useful. So first of all, Alison, what is child inclusive mediation? What does it mean? So child inclusive mediation uh, can happen during the course of a mediation with parents. So I might be mediating with a couple um, who are separating or have already separated to help them talk about the arrangements for their children, uh, whether it be how much time they spend with each parent, where they stay overnight, uh, where they go on holiday. Um, it could be if one parent's going to have to move overseas, perhaps with work, whether the children are going to go with them, and what those arrangements look like. Uh, what school they're going to go to, the whole plethora of, of things that need to be decided for children when parents separate. And uh, clearly central to all of this is the children. Um, and child inclusive mediation is where the children are offered the opportunity to have a voice uh, in the mediation so that their views can be heard. So if this is about the children being heard, how does that actually work in practice? So how it would usually work is we we'll already have met with the parents and have identified what the issues are and if, if the children are aged 10 or over then the mediation code of practice suggests that they should be offered the opportunity to have a, a voice if they wish to, to meet with the mediator. So uh, if, if the parents think that that might be a good idea then I'll talk them through how the practicalities of how that will work and then uh, I will write to the children in whatever way is best for them. So it could be an email if they have an email address, it could be in the post. And I'll check with the parents the wording of the letter so that they're happy with it and they think it's going to strike the right note with the children. Uh, and that will make clear that it's entirely up to the children whether they want to come and meet with me to have a chat about th how things are for them and so that they can share any views that they would like to be shared. And there are some rules around it. So. Um, and the parents need to agree to those in advance and we sign a, a, an agreement which records those rules. Uh, for example, the parents need to be okay with the possibility of the children talking with me about something that they then say they don't want me to share with the parents. And uh, the parents have to agree that if that's the case, I won't share it with them, which is actually pretty tough for parents. Um, although actually that very rarely happens in practice because if children have taken the option of coming to speak to me it's generally because there is something that they want to say and they want to be shared. Um, I suppose I should mention that actually of course if there's anything shared that suggests that the children or indeed anyone else might be at risk of, of harm um, then that confidentiality would not apply but that's also explained to the children as well and, and they generally get that. So if the children then come to the mediation and you talk to them and they explain their situation and what they're thinking yeah. about it all, what do you what then happens in the mediation? What do you do with that information? Okay, so after the children have spoken with me about it, then uh, before that, that meeting finishes, I will agree with them what, if anything, they would like me to share with the parents mm -hmm. and make sure that it's really clear what, that they're okay with that. Um, and then usually I will have arranged to meet with both parents as soon as possible after that meeting has taken place because it's actually pretty hard for parents to wait. They know that their children, the most important people in their lives, have just spoken with me as the mediator, uh, but they don't know what they've said, so it's pretty tough. So generally I'll try and meet with the parents as soon as possible afterwards, and quite often actually it's straight away or, or maybe the next day. Um, and then I share that information with the parents. Quite often I ask the children to, to do a drawing when they're with me so that they can express how they're feeling about something in the form of a picture. Um, and then with their agreement as well, I can share it with their parents. And actually just having them draw gives them something to do while they're talking with me. So it takes a bit of the focus off them, makes them feel a little bit more comfortable generally. And actually also the pictures are really quite interesting and informative about how they're feeling about their situation generally. So then I'll meet with the parents afterwards, share what the children have said, uh, and then show them the pictures if they've drawn pictures, and then we uh, talk about you know, where that leaves the particular issues that, that they are trying to sort out in mediation. And do you find that it's a very helpful process? Is it helpful for everybody, or is it just helpful in some circumstances? Uh, so I think it can be, uh, it usually is helpful. Mm. 
because the children are not going to do it if it's not something they really want to do. Mm. And so they have got something that they want to share. Mm. And then they feel that they have had the chance to have a voice. Uh, I always make really clear to the children and to the parents that it's not about the children making decisions. It absolutely isn't. Uh, the decisions about what's best for them are decisions that need to be made by their parents. Or if the parents can't agree, then ultimately by a court or an arbitrator. Um, but it is important that children's voices are heard and actually generally I find children are really, really sensible. They're grounded, they say it how it is um, and it's, so it's helpful for them to be able to have the opportunity to air uh, what they've got to say and it actually generally helps parents to know what's really going on for their children. It helps them really focus on their children which is really tough to do when you're going through a separation because you feel pretty awful quite a lot of the time um, and actually it's really hard not to think about yourself and actually really to focus on what your children want and need. So it's, it's really helpful for that. And so often, therefore, the, the conversation you'll have had with the children and the feedback of that to the parents will actually help unlock many of the issues that you're discussing, the parents are discussing in mediation. It'll help them find a way forward. Not, not always, I'm sure, but often, that, is that the case? I, I think at the worst, it helps the, children, uh, it helps the parents to really focus on, on the children and what the children want and need. Um, at best it helps resolve the issues and in my experience generally it does help. It at least produces a shift in the way that parents have been thinking about the situation. So uh, actually it's really key when you're setting it up to make sure that it isn't going to be bad for the children mm -hmm. and if there's any suggestion that it, that it would be, if I think it would be or if either parent thinks it's not going to be positive for the children then it won't happen in the first place. It's really important. Okay, so that's a bit about child inclusive mediation. Well, how can people find out a bit more about child inclusive mediation if they want to? So you can have a look at our website. There's information on divorce.co.uk uh, and I think there's information on Mills and Reeve as well. And that's, the details of that are all on the end of the, of the end slide on this blog as usual. Uh, otherwise, you could have a look at the Family Mediation Council website. So that's familymediationcouncil.org.uk or the resolution website, resolution uk, or actually just drop me an email, uh, tweet me, uh, give me a call and I'll talk with you about it. Thank you Alison. So as always with the Family Law Vlog we're giving you some information about the basics but if you need advice about your specific situation or the situation of your family or your children then you should take particular advice on your circumstances and our details and those of the rest of our colleagues at Mills and Reeve are at the end of this blog.